So let's talk about treatment of ADHD and its specifics. Uh, treatment is most effective when it encompasses three particular uh, components. The first is to demystify the, the condition. That the family should recognize that ADHD is better thought of as a variation of normal, as a different way of processing information, than as a disorder. Children with ADHD have a variety of strengths. Many of them have real artistic or musical talent. Some are remarkable athletes. Some have an intuitive sense of, of mechanics. What we're looking for is to understand that we're bringing these strengths out as well. Uh, medication is the mainstay of treatment. The goal is to get optimal benefit with tolerable side effects. Uh, we're looking to make sure that the child is responding well to medication and is dealing with it comfortably and getting the best benefit out of it. And finally, there are behavioral management issues. And the goal is to set up uh, and help the patient develop tech, uh, organizational skills and techniques for self-regulation. A lot of this will develop into uh, processes to help that child develop good habits to deal with all of the ordinary, routine, boring things of life. If we can do this as a habit, we can make it as automatic as pulling on your pants in the morning. What we do is we free up uh, that child's energy level to really focus on the things that are of importance to him, the interesting stuff that makes his life exciting and interesting. When we talk about medications, uh, we're talking largely about stimulants. There are two classes of stimulants, uh, methylphenidate and amphetamines. These have been around for over 70 years. We have a great deal of understanding of these medications, how they work, what benefits they have, what side effects they're likely to have, uh, and we know full well that these medications are fundamentally safe medications as long as they're taken appropriately and, and uh, as directed. Uh, as, uh, largely because of a variety of genetic differences in children, we know that about half of all ADHD children will respond equally well to either class of medication. It doesn't matter what you pick. We know that a th about a quarter of the children, maybe a little more than a quarter, do clearly better on amphetamine type stimulants. And we know that about a quarter, maybe a little less than a quarter, do clearly better on methylphenidate. Uh, the goal is to find the drug that works the best and the dose that works the best and make sure that we are treating that child optimally. Now, all stimulants have the same set of side effects. Uh, the main side effect is decreased appetite. This is such an important piece that if appetite is not affected, we probably have a, a dose that's too low for the child. What you're looking for is to make that, that, uh, that level effective and still have tolerable side effects. There are a variety of ways of helping with appetite. I'm not gonna go into them right now, uh, but these are children who, who really should be able to do quite well. There's a general sense that stimulants uh, prevent sleep, and this is certainly true if you are not ADHD. But what we find with ADHD children is that when they're off their medication, their brains are so active, so involved, that they may have difficulty falling asleep because their brains are just running overboard. Uh, sometimes giving them a little bit of focus to fall asleep is actually helpful, and there are a variety of ways of doing that other than besides medication. Uh, medication is not going to make it difficult for them to sleep. When a child starts a new medication, they, he may have a mild headache or a little bit of abdominal discomfort. This is generally mild. It can be ignored. It goes away in a couple of days. If he's complaining enough, you might want to give him a Tylenol for a headache or a Tums tablet for a stomach ache, but this is usually a very mild issue. If it is more significant and going on longer than just a couple of days, he's on either the wrong medication or the wrong dose, and you need to modify that. There are some non-stimulants available as well. The main non-stimulant that we have is called Stratera. This came out in 2003, and we thought it was going to revolutionize the treatment of ADHD. Turns out it didn't work out quite that well. Um, the difficulty with Stratera is it only has about 70 to 80% of the potency of stimulants. This will work fine for a child during summer vacation, perhaps. Uh, but for children in school, it just doesn't seem to be enough for the vast majority of kids. They really need that 100% that they get with a stimulant. Uh, for adults, uh, they can often manage very nicely with Stratera, and this is a good choice for adults. The other advantages of Stratera is it has a long duration, uh, about 24 hours in many cases. It has a lower incidence of side effects, 
and it's not a controlled substance, which makes it much easier to prescribe. The other class of non-stimulants are called alpha agonists, and this includes guanfacine and clonidine. Uh, these are medications that are not terribly effective for helping attentional focus, which is critical in our ADHD children. It's better for impulsive and overactive behaviors. We usually use these medications as an adjunct to a stimulant. It gives us just a little more of an of a effective treatment uh, and can sometimes give us that little bit of an advantage so you can raise the dose, raise the essential dose, without causing more side effects. Uh, the alpha agonists also have particular advantages in children who may have sustained uh, serious child abuse, uh, serious uh, uh, trauma in their, in their early life. Uh, the main side effect we see with this is it may be a, a sedating for the initial week or two and then you acclimate to it and generally you do just fine. So we're coming to the end of our discussion. And one of the things that I want to spend just a couple of minutes about is pointing out that the same traits that can be so challenging in our children with ADHD may also serve as the basis of success in adult life. So inattention to detail may translate into the capacity to see the big picture. The distractibility that can be so annoying in a child can lead to some hyper-observant abilities, a rich imagination. Impulsiveness translates into the capacity for quick responses. The, the hyperactivity is the high energy level that we admire in, a worker, in, a, in somebody in the workplace, not so much in the classroom. Uh, the fact that they're easily bored leads to a capacity for innovation. And that hyper-focus, which drives us crazy when they're spending their whole day on, on video games, in an adult translates into a large capacity to concentrate on those things which have urgency. People with ADHD are creative, they're good in a crisis, they're resilient, they're energetic, they're enthusi enthusiastic, they're able to think on their feet, they love challenges, they love to interact with others, there are entrepreneurs, there are our, our artists, there are inventors, we see them in our everyday life, there are salesmen, some of them are our doctors, and we'll most likely find them in the high stress, area, stress areas, such as emergency rooms or intensive care units. They may be our EMTs, our firefighters, and often they're our friends, our neighbors, and our family. Thank you very much.